like half of my comments are just asking me to talk about Devon AI. A lot of people are calling it a complete scam and other people are afraid it's going to completely destroy the entire tech industry. And honestly, I decided not to talk about it for a while because it felt very scammy to me at first, but I wanted to give them more chances and to get more information. And I feel like we have more information and it's it's not really good. So in case you've been living under a rock, this is the initial announcement from Cognition, introducing Devin, the first AI software engineer. Meet Devin, the world's first fully autonomous AI software engineer. And when I first saw this, it immediately raised a bunch of red flags. It reminded me immediately of how often Elon Musk likes to talk about his autonomous cars that aren't autonomous. They can't drive themselves. And this felt the same way. Because the idea that we went from chat GPT to AI autonomous software engineer with nothing in between felt absolutely ridiculous and like probably something that they can't back up. And honestly, the thing that's most upsetting about this to me is not just the fact that this feels like a misleading claim, which to be clear, I think this is very misleading, but it's the fact that these create headlines and beginners see those headlines. The more experienced software engineers can look at this and say, this feels unreasonable. It feels like something that's not real. But a beginner who doesn't know better will see this and think, well, there's no reason for me to learn how to code now because we have AI autonomous software engineers onto the next thing. And it's going to take all of these people who could have become good software engineers. And it's going to push them away from the industry because they're going to feel like there's just no point. Okay, but what did they even ship? Well, we can go to the preview of Devon or at least what they call a preview. And we have this very basic looking website and we have some things you can try. So let's say debug and fix the test in this code base. And it's going to have some example code base, but then it just asks you to request access with your email. And this to me is one of my least favorite things about Silicon Valley. This is not a form to request access to Devon. Sure, you might be requesting it, but they are not going to grant it. This is a form for them to collect email addresses so that they can go to venture capital firms in Silicon Valley and say, hey, look at us. We have millions of people ready to use our application. Give us more money. And I find that to be a little bit misleading. And generally speaking, if people claim that they have some amazing thing, but they're not letting anybody use it, they probably don't have something as amazing as they're saying they do. And this to me feels like an example of that because they make it look like you can use it but you really can't. But anyways, the initial calls to this potentially being some kind of scam came from a lot of people sort of dissecting their website. So we have this cognitionlabs.com and a lot of people are just saying, oh, if you're so proud that you raised $21 million and you have an AI software engineer, couldn't you either use some of those $21 million or your AI software engineer to build a website that's not just black text on a white background with almost nothing there? And while that is a very surface level complaint, and I don't think that makes it a scam, it is a realistic one. It's like, why is this the whole website? Why is this all we got? And I'm not going to go over all of the points they made here on the Reddit. The gist of it is essentially they were doing things like running the website in dev mode, and it just felt very beginnerish. But there are some other good reactions to all of the content here. One of the best, I think, came from Prime. So I will link to his video down in the description as well if you want to watch that. But the gist here is essentially they did basically nothing custom and a lot of very beginnerish mistakes, which make you question if these are people who have the ability to build an AI autonomous software engineer and why their AI autonomous software engineer didn't fix these problems for them. Okay, but what I do want to talk about a little bit more is this video that they made called Devin's Upwork Side Hustle, Watch Devin Make Money Taking on Messy Upwork Tasks. Also aside here, this new YouTube layout <laughs> is not it. If YouTube needs a new front-end engineer to like fix this, call me. So essentially the claim of this video is that they took Devin to Upwork, the freelancing website, and it was able to do a bunch of freelancing tasks and make some money. That's essentially what they're claiming with this title and description. But it seems like, it seems like that's a lie. So this video debunking Devin, first AI software engineer Upwork lie exposed, came out from Internet of Bugs. It's a great video. I'll link to it in the description as well. But if you take away from it, what I take away from it, it's that this guy kind of caught him red handed. And this is just a lie. It's just false advertising. It's a way to add more hype to Devin. And I think a lot of times, ultimately, what they're trying to do is get more hype so they can raise more money and eventually use that more money to build the thing that they claimed in the hype. But oftentimes we never get back to that last step of building the thing that was claimed in the hype. 
and we just end up with this worthless hype and a bunch of money wasted in Silicon Valley. Or sometimes they have legitimately built something super cool. I don't know because I can't actually test Devin, but sometimes they do have something really cool, but it maybe isn't cool enough to warrant how much money they've raised, or they want it to just look even cooler so they can raise even more money so they overhype things even though they might not actually need to. So we're not going to react to the entire video in this video. If you want to see it, it's linked in the description. It's a great video but I do want to react to a few of the key points he makes. So the first sort of point that he makes in this video is that they are cherry picking Upwork tasks. So you can see in the video, they actually searched for something. So they were looking for a specific task for Devin to do. And then you can see there's a description of the task that Devin was supposedly doing, where it says, I'm looking to make inferences with the models in this repository. Your deliverable will be detailed instructions on how to do it in an EC2 instance in AWS. Please provide your estimate to complete the job. I will not respond to cover letters without an estimate. And Devin did none of these things. There was no deliverable with detailed instructions on how to do it in an EC2 instance in AWS. So there is no plausible way that the work shown in the video was given to this person on Upwork and they said, yes, this is good, and they paid them for it. That just did not happen. Another interesting point of this video is that he actually tried to do the task that Devin was trying to do, and he says it took him 36 minutes. And at least for me, when I saw the initial video from Devin, it made it look like Devin just did some big task. Like Devin is an AI autonomous software engineer. So Devin just did like a day of software engineering work, but it did 36 minutes of software engineering work. And even that isn't really true because it didn't actually do the task that was required of it from the spec. And we'll see that in a minute. It just sort of did something else. So it didn't even really solve the problem. And the problem it tried to solve is one that took an actual software engineer only 36 minutes. So it's not like it was some massive problem. All right, so now I do wanna watch a bit of this video where he discusses what exactly it is that Devin even did in the video compared to what they claimed Devin did. Given that we know that Devin didn't do what the customer asked and Devin's report did not have any of the stuff that the customer wanted and that Devin didn't actually get paid for any of this, what did Devin actually do? If it didn't make money, what did it make and how good a job of that did it do? So here's a screenshot from the video. This is the repo in question. We'll come back to screens like this later. This is the first thing that Devin really changed. So there's a thing called a requirements.txt file. It determines what version of dependent libraries your code is gonna run. And it had to change some things because the, the libraries that this repo originally used from four years ago, some of them aren't downloadable anymore because they're so old. So something had to change. Here it says that Devin is actually updating the code. I guess that's kind of arguably true. I would say it's more a configuration file than changing the code, but I'll allow it. So a quick interjection here. One thing I actually think is really cool, assuming that this video is at least somewhat real, like the original video, is that Devin actually asked a question and you can see they responded with sample data is fine to the question that Devin asked. And if they simply said that this is the thing they've innovated on, AI that doesn't just tell you things, but actually asks clarifying questions first, I would be like, this is amazing. This change would be so good for something like ChatGPT if it didn't just spit out information regardless of if it was correct, but instead clarified what it is you were asking and gets more accurate information based on that. That's amazing. That is actually a legitimate thing that it looks like they have innovated on, but that's not really what they focused on. And I wish that they focused more on the actual innovations that are here. Okay, so Devin fairly early on hits an error. I did not hit this error, and you'll see why in a sec. So zooming in, here's this command line error. So here at the top, we have this error with image open file not found, no such file or directory. So this error is in a code file called visualizedetections.py. And the reason that I didn't run into this problem is because there is no file called visualizedetections.py in that repository. All right, so I'll stop it here. The gist of the rest of this section is that Devin fixes a bunch of bugs that it created itself 
in files that don't even exist and nothing in the video even really indicates where these files came from. So it feels like the video is made to make Devin look like it is doing all of these advanced things, doing all of this advanced debugging when it's not. It is simply causing bugs and then sort of fixing those bugs, kind of, and he shows later in his video that the actual fixes Devin comes up with aren't even great fixes, but it's not even fixing bugs that matter and it's not solving the initial problem at all. So it's certainly not doing the thing that they are claiming it was doing. The problem is Devin is here debugging a file and that file it created and it's not in the repo at all. This is pretty insidious. So this gives the person who's viewing the video, who's not paying that much attention, who didn't have time or take the effort to look at the repo. It gives the viewer the impression that Devin is finding errors in the repository that the Upwork user asked us to look at and fixing the errors in the repository. That's not the case. Devin is generating its own errors and then debugging and fixing the errors that it made itself. That's not what it seems like Devin would be doing. It's not what Devin is implied to be doing. It's not what many people who have written articles and posted videos about Devin have thought Devin was doing. But in fact, Devin isn't fixing code that it found on the internet. Devin isn't fixing code that a customer asked it to fix. Devin is fixing code that it generated with errors in it. And that's not at all what most of the people who watch this video will think that it's doing. What's worse is that there's no reason for this. This is the readme file from that repo. I told you we'd come back to this page. There is a file called infer.py that is in that repo. And it does exactly what Devin does in this video. The readme file tells you that it does it. It tells you how to use it. I don't think the person that wrote this repository detecting road damage, I don't think the person that wrote that could have made it any easier to understand how we were supposed to use it. But Devin didn't seem to be able to figure that out. So I think this is one of the biggest issues I've seen with every AI coding tool I've ever tried. And I've tried a lot of them at this point is that they're horrible with context. If you ask, say, ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot to do something for you, to write some helper function for you, they're pretty decent at it most of the time. But the second you throw them into a real repository, whether it be through one of those tools or one of the many other tools, they just can't do it. They cannot understand the entire context of a repository and work in it any way like a real software engineer can do. Now, does that mean that they will never be able to do this and they'll never have that context? No, it's probably possible, but we are just very, very, very far away from that actually being the reality. But yet that is the reality that so many companies are trying to sell us right now. And so Devin had to create this other thing that was a mess. This code right here, this reading into a buffer thing, it's bad. Right. This is the way we had to read files in decade ago in C, in really lower level languages. Python has much better ways to handle this. As Devin is figuring out, this kind of thing is hard to debug. It's complicated. It's difficult. It's easy to get off by a little bit, which is, I think, what Devin is trying to debug here. I'm not exactly sure what was going wrong, but that's what it seems like is going wrong, is it got off by some characters and so the JSON didn't parse right. But I mean, this is not how you would do it these days. This is not how you would do it in Python. This is not something that I would accept in a code review from a junior developer. This is causing more problems than it actually solves. This is bad. It's just bad. In addition, there is a real error in the repo and Devin didn't find it or fix it. Devin just created a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, so this is another thing that tends to happen with these AI coding tools in that they're trained on all of this data and I don't think they've done a great job of telling them which parts of the data are good code and bad code. Like I've noticed if I use chat GPT to generate code, a lot of the time it generates good code, but then randomly it'll spit out some code that looks like it was written in like 2008 and it's using a bunch of old functions and deprecated things. And it's like, where, where did this come from? Why are you doing this? And it's probably because it saw something like that in it's training data 
And that's just how it knows to do things because it doesn't actually understand. It's just a large language model and therefore just essentially predicting text. And these things can be solved. These are problems that are solvable and potentially will be solved eventually, maybe even in the relatively near future. But for the time being, they're not solved problems and pretending like they are solved problems is very dangerous. And companies know this. This is why companies aren't replacing software engineers with AI, because the most important thing for tech companies is to have software engineers who aren't necessarily the best software engineers, but to have software engineers that don't make major mistakes. Because one very bad software engineer will have a much larger negative effect than the positive effect of good software engineers. And this is why companies aren't going to be taking risks on tools like Devon AI anytime soon to replace actual software engineering because it's just too much of a risk to replace something that is already working and already generating them billions and billions of dollars. Now, one other point he makes in this video is that the timestamps that they show make it look like it took literally an entire day, if not a couple days for Devon to solve this task. Now, I don't know if that's the case. I don't even really understand how that could be. So my hope would be that it was simply they asked the question and Devin asked some question back and the engineer had gone to lunch and he forgot to respond and came back and it just took the engineer a lot of time because they had meetings and things, not because Devin took a lot of time, because the idea that the AI took the whole day to do something makes like no sense to me. So maybe that's not the case, but it is worth saying that it seems in this video like it took like a whole day or two and that just doesn't make sense. Let's look at the list of things that Devin thought it needed to do. If you look at the left there, there's like this series of checkboxes. I'm gonna run through some pages. Exactly what they are isn't really important, but just look how many there are. This list of checkboxes gives the impression that Devin did something complicated or difficult. And when you're watching the video and you see all this scroll by, you're like, you know, wow, Devin must have done a bunch of stuff. All you needed to do, all I had to do to replicate Devin's results was get an environment set up on a cloud instance with the right hardware and run literally two commands with the... Yeah, so this might be the first time that I've seen Devin do something that an actual software engineer would do. So let's go back. So it made a big list of stuff it claimed to do and it didn't really need to do any of them. And most of these steps are very, very, very basic things. So let's be honest here. This kind of looks like me at stand-up, like on like a Monday when people are asking me what I did on Friday, but in reality on Friday, I left work at like 11 a.m. and I got there at like 10.45 just in time to eat a little bit of food and leave. This is this is kind of real. This is what software engineers are doing. They're pretending <laughs> to do more than they actually are. But in reality, he's right. This is just a list of things to make it look like it did a bunch of stuff to make it sound impressive when in reality, it made up a bunch of tasks that it didn't need to do. Or a lot of the tasks are just things that are very, very basic and quick and you wouldn't really consider to be an independent task. But anyways, my overall view on this isn't that Devon AI is like a complete scam. I think they've probably built something cool and it looks like they have made some legitimate improvements to what we have currently with other AI coding systems. But I saw a comment that summed it up really well and that's that the normalization in the tech industry of faking demos is horrible and it's extremely, extremely dangerous. We've seen this time and time again in things like the crypto industry, but we're seeing it more and more now with these AI coding tools and I think it really needs to stop. And I think instead of releasing videos like this, if for some reason you can't release Devin to where we can all try it, then why don't you release a video where you actually show what it's actually like to use Devin with no cuts, nothing like that. Or even better, there's an open invitation on my channel and I'm sure literally every software engineering channel on YouTube to come on and let us try Devin ourselves. But anyways, if you're curious about my thoughts on AI coding tools, I made an entire tier list over here that you should watch next.